I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. Hello, I'm Becca Laurent, and I'm here to empower you with knowledge of a natural health lifestyle. Today I'm going to touch on a subject that can be considered controversial, though I don't actually see why, or even why it should be. I do indeed encourage conversation on this subject or any other point on health, but if you feel like that you are here to create chaos just because of statements that are made here today, then just take it somewhere else. So with that said, let's get started with why use herbs, herbs versus pharma. So my point here today is to encourage you with the thought of we are designed to thrive in our environment. So we are designed to thrive in our environment. But if you are sick of dealing with health issues or otherwise don't feel that you fit the description of thriving, then it's your responsibility to assess and address the issues. It's not your parents, it's not your spouse, and above all, it's not even your doctor's right or responsibility. It's your responsibility in yours alone. You are designed to thrive in your environment. Any true creator ha that has created something, anything, knows their creation and how it works. They know how to tweak their creation uh, when things are just not quite right. And that same thing goes for us and our body. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree, and which is the fruit of the tree yielding seed to you, it shall be for meat. And to every beast of the earth and to every fowl of the air and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life. I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. So what does that even mean? That means that God has given everything to his creation that is needed to thrive in life. That is everything to thrive a nice, full life. So as you can see, we are given herbs to maintain our health in our body through food and its medicine. But what is herb and what is herbal medicine? So the definition of an herb is a plant or plant part, whether it's the leaves, the seeds, the flower or root that benefits humans, right? These plant parts can be used for flavoring, food, beauty, and medicine. So herbal medicine is using natural substances like herbs to manage our health. This is the way we were designed to function and thrive. Most of us are so used to treating our ailments by using some sort of pharmaceutical medication that the thought of using plants for your health may seem a bit outdated. Am I right? Not only that, we have been sold for generations that to have a long life, we must manage a large pile of chemical pills using a huge portion of our monthly income to do so. This is not what's intended for us. We are intended to thrive in our environment. So has that sunk in yet? Using herbs is nothing new. Sometimes people speak of herbalism as alternative medicine. The implications is that conven conventional pharmaceutical medication is the standard and anything else is inferior. Despite the criticism of herbal medicine among mainstream medical professionals, it is wise to remember that herbs have a long history of use. Since the beginning, people have been using plants for nourishment and medicine. There are many plants that produce a positive changes such as increased perspiration, maybe a bowel movement, urination, relief of pain, uh, managing vision, healing, and, and among many other processes. Observation of these benefits have been passed down from generation to generation, which with each generation adding to 
and refining the knowledge base of their local plants. Every culture in the world has developed a base of herbal knowledge in this same way. In fact, two thirds of the world's population still use herbal medicine as their main form of healthcare. An advantage of using herbs in your healthcare plan is that herbs are readily available, as was to our ancestors through the millennia. I'm not saying for you to go out and uh, start eating your lawn. I'll leave that conversation for another time. I'm going to start off simply with herbs that are called spices. You probably have most, if not all, of these herbs in your kitchen right now. So you don't believe me that it can be that simple, do you? Okay, so watch this. In just about every home, there is a spice rack, right? The average spice rack contains what? About 16 different spices, give or take. Some of the spices commonly found are maybe cayenne, oregano, parsley, basil. Uh, you could have mustard, sage, thyme. Of course, there's salt and pepper, rosemary, dill. Every kitchen must have garlic and ginger. And then there's cinnamon, cumin, and turmeric, right? Did you know with just these few spices, you can positively affect all the systems of your body? In just these few herbs, you can tend to circulatory symptoms like high blood pressure, cholesterol, and even heart disease. You can balance body systems like blood sugar, hormonal levels, and of course, there is your muscular system. You can fight off viral and bacterial issues such as colds, flus, and germs. You can add all sorts of vitamins and minerals to anything that you're ingesting. You can provide antioxidants, uh, work on preventing bad breath, and even help with hair loss. So why use herbs? For one, safety. Herbs, especially your spices, are generally recognized as safe because they are food. Herbs in general are safer than pharmaceutical medication, even when talking of the over-the-counter types of medicine. One of the reasons for this is because herbs contain hundreds or even thousands of constituents or compounds. These constituents work together to create a synergistic effect that can have more than one action on the body at a time without adverse side effects. Pharmaceuticals, on the other hand, might start off as a plant material, but end up as a franken chemical. When a pharmaceutical company extracts a wanted compound, they then synthesize it and manipulate it without the other natural occurring constituents working with it. This is creating something totally new and totally foreign to our body, what I call a franken chemical. This should be a cause for concern. On average, in the United States, 128,000 people die each year from their prescribed medications. And with drugs being pulled from the market each year, it should make you think that maybe these companies aren't creating these medicines for our health and mind. In fact, in the United States, despite being number one by far in healthcare spending, our health ranks dead last in the industrialized nations. Now, here's the next question I always get at about this point. If it's all that easy to tend to your health at home with a few plants, then why do these pharmaceutical companies spend so much money and time creating their drugs? I'll give you one reason, money. Pharmaceutical companies are not in business to make you healthy. No, they need consumers to use their products and they are not going to get that money from you if you are healthy. Case in point is the symptom of high blood pressure. An average annual expense in America for high blood pressure med uh, prescriptions is 2,371. That's per person per year for the rest of your life. Pharma is not interested in solving blood pressure issues, just masking the symptom with another pill. Cha-ching! Blood pressure medication is what I call a gateway drug because once you succumb to this regimen, 
Other medications uh, for other symptoms like cholesterol, diabetes, arthritis, and heart disease aren't far behind. No wonder the pharmaceutical companies made $1.3 trillion last year. To help get that kick in a bit, I wanted to do some math to math it out. There are about 330 million people in the United States. This comes to almost $4,000 in pills per month per man, woman, and child in the U.S. last year. I know for me and mine, we didn't come close to spending this on pharma intervention, so you can just add our numbers to the pot. Now, let's back up just a little bit. With what I just said, you might, it might sound like as if I am anti-doctor and anti-medicine. Uh, I'm not saying to leave modern medicine in the dust. I'm not here to tell you not to seek your doctor's help or take your medicine when you need it. I am here to provide the education and support to not need it. But there is a time and place for professional help. Before adding herbs to your healthcare plan, you must realize that you are to take responsibility for your decisions, but this should be a given with whatever you decide to do in life. Educate yourself and use your own God-given common sense. In home healthcare, it is important to realize when a situation is beyond your ability, and of course, in those circumstances, we need to seek the appropriate help. So what's next? Today, I am here to help you start down your path of a natural health lifestyle. The point today is that God knew what he was doing when he made the herbs of the field. There is more to your spice rack than just making your meals taste good. There is more to your fruits and vegetables than just adding serving amounts to your plate. Let thy food be thy medicine and thy medicine be thy food. To help with this subject, I created a free book to help you get started with using spices in your daily life. Be sure to hop down to the description box uh, to grab adding spices to your life. If you like this information, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit subscribe for more information on a natural health lifestyle. Any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section and I will address them accordingly. I will talk with you again soon, and until then, get healthy, be happy, and herbal on!